Hi you guys, it's Tom from The Bunker. Um, I'm back with another painting tutorial and this time we're going to paint an Ultramarine Primaris Lieutenant. Um, one of the subscribers has basically messaged me and asking about, he's painting up his Indominus box set and he asked me how I'd approach painting a Space Marine. <laughs> it's been years since I painted a Space Marine so let's go. So I've primed him up in black. He's a lovely model, lot, plenty of detail on there, things like that. Um, so we're going to start with McCrag Blue. Now I think there's Kelgar Blue, things like that, but they basically start with your blue, <laughs> okay? And the approach that we're going to take is a relatively sort of straightforward one. Um, the way I sort of approach painting pretty much anything is I put my base colours down first, I shade it down, and then we build up the detail after that. Okay, so what I'm doing at the minute, I'm just putting a bit of water into my paint, I'm thinning it slightly. I've got my, my blue. And it's simple as really, I'm just going to paint in all the armour. So anywhere where his armour would be blue, let's get in there and paint it up. Okay, I'm going over all of the sort of like the, the Aquila on him and things like that at the minute. Okay, and I'm just get that armour blue. Okay, just it doesn't matter if we go over any sort of certain areas, anywhere where there's you know, those sort of like bits in between their arm and things like that. Now he's got a, a sort of tabard on there. The shield on the front, I'm going to do that blue as well, because eventually that'll be a different colour. But for now, it wants that base colour on. Again, it doesn't matter if we're going into some of the other areas that, you know, perhaps are going to be a different colour eventually. Okay, we're just getting that base down. His helmet. Now the primaries have like this stripe, stripe down their helmet, don't they? So, but I'm just going over the whole thing, so we'll get this coat on and see what it looks like. So literally, I'm just, just going to cover all the armour plates in the blue, okay? He's got like a protection grief there, underneath here, okay? On the inside of his arm. And I'm, I'm quite happily going over areas that I know eventually are going to be a different colour. And that, that, that's not a problem, okay? I want that nice sort of blue tone on his pad. I'm going up up in one, one swift movement from the bottom of the pad to the top to get that smooth sort of blue finish on there, okay? Go around him, on the back, you know. And it's like I say, the, the way that I paint, it'll get a sort of reasonable tabletop or beyond standard. You know, something that you can put on a board and, and the guys at the club or on your friends that you play with or whatever will go, oh yeah, that looks pretty striking. I'm quite impressed with that, you know, whichever. Around there. Paint beyond the area that you're painting for the first thing because it gives you that smooth coat. Okay, should we get up in there? And this blue is almost the most important part of this paint because it's what you're going to adhere the rest of your colours to. Okay? So I'm quite happy with going round, getting all that blue armour. Okay? And look, it's not... These people, you can sit and pick each individual panel out if you want to. But you know, if you want to do that, that's totally fine. No one's going to say anything to you, you know? It's like, it's, it's your hobby, you do whatever you want. But I'm a bit more... Get the areas that I do want to be certain colour on there and see how we go. Okay? All of his legs, so on. So I'll finish the rest of him and I'll come back to you. Okay, so we're now, we're now blue. He's blue. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> okay, so while that's drying off, uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come in with some, some oak brown. Now, I'm, I'm using oak brown because uh, I've got it to hand. Um, any, any dark brown is going to be fine with this. Um, and what I'm doing is things like this area here. So he's got like a, a, a case for his gun. And if we look around, he's got like a belt. And then he's got a few couple of pouches. And then this here. And I want those brown. Okay. Because it's a good base for what I'm doing next with it. Okay. So let's shake that paint up. A little bit on the palette. Tiniest dot of water in there. 
I always always use water. Look, you can use thinning agents and things like that if you want to, guys. That's 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 totally fine. Just have a little bit more paint in there. Um, Lime in medium is really good, um, but it tends to be more for sort of mixing washes and things like that to keep that consistency. I'm a bit of a like use water. It's like the the purest way, I suppose. And then on on things like here, I'm, I'm simply just going to block that colour in as well. Um, yes, it's uh, it's quite a you know like a, a, a sort of loose colour. This, if that makes sense. So it's like you'll need a couple of coats. Um, but essentially, all I'm doing, just like before, I'm just blocking that colour in. Okay. It's belt. down the back of the pouch inside it it's got like these little pouch on the back there I don't know what a marine keeps in that I honestly don't um, you know if you, if you know if you're a marine law expert or anything like that great let me know belt along the back yeah, and I'm just picking that colour out. I'm putting down the base colours. Okay. The scabbard. Longer areas, all along. One brush stroke. Yeah. One brush stroke. Just let it... Build up that colour. Don't be afraid to put two thin coats on. Don't be afraid to go over onto detail that you get to paint as well. You know. Okay, so I'll put some browns in there. Okay, now that obviously needs to dry. It's going to need a second coat. Start building up that colour. Across the front as well. The only thing I'm really sort of being careful at the minute is not to switch the blue that I've put down. You know, anything else is, is totally fine. I'm just building up that colour. Now things like Games Workshop layer paints, they're probably better for this if I'm totally honest with you. Okay, but there's his brown. <clears throat> Clean your brush off. And now, while those areas are drying, I'm going to look at his Volkite pistol. Now, Volkite weaponry um, was in 30k originally, and it used to, I think it used to do extra wounds for a certain role and things like that. Anyway, regardless, it's sort of age of strife technology equipment. So, what we're going to do. I want that to look slightly different to the rest of his metallic, so I'm going to actually hit it with some kinetic alloy. From Games Workshop. Now kinetic alloy is a really nice paint. Okay. It's yes, it looks silver, but it's got that little sort of edge twinge to it. Um just something a little bit different. And obviously we've not touched this area yet, so I can happily keep keep painting my miniature. Okay, I'm just trying to be careful to not touch the blue. You know, if you do go over the blue, it's fine at this stage. Once the colour's dry, go back over top of it. <laughs> you know, it really is as simple as that painting. It's not a, it's not a, a, a mad science or anything like that get those base colours blocked in. And as I say, look, I'm not, I'm not going to win Golden Demon or anything like that. If I do manage to put some decent looking armies down, and I like to get my models painted, I know what it is. It's just better to play with painted. Unpainted stuff dies first, doesn't it? 
I'm paying to stuff cost you VPs, I don't know. I think you get ten, don't you? You get ten, I think, for having a painted army now. Okay. So that's fall kite weapon done. <coughs> All will become clear with that shortly. So at this stage now, we don't really want to push our look, we want to let that dry, okay? So I'm gonna let that dry and touch up the brown again. So once back over the brown, let the ball kite weapon dry, and then we'll come back and we'll we'll pick out some of the white details on the shield. Okay, so I'm happy that the uh, the blue's dry, the metal's dry, and the brown's dry. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to come in with Corax White at this point, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go around the edge of this shield, okay? And it might take a couple of coats, these guys. So let me start it off. As always, paint on the palette, a little bit of a tap, and just go around the edge. Okay, all the way up to the edges, around the sides, yeah, and I'm going to go all around that area, and I'm going to give it two coats to come back to you. Okay, so I'm thoroughly happy that the white is dry, uh, the other aspects are dry. What I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to come in with Stormhost Silver, and what I'm doing here is I'm picking out the silver aspects of the paint job, um, just to, again, it's all the base colours, you know. Um, little tiny dab of water in with metallics, you know, water down every paint, that's, uh, it really is a, it really is a sort of a, a key tip, so to speak. Bear with me for one second, just while we get some more paint on. There we go. Lovely. So, and what I'm doing here is, it's really simple, I'm just picking out the metallics. The majority of it is actually gold on this, these guys, um, Ultramarine seems to be a, gold infused um, type to, you know, chapter, so what I'm doing, I go around the edge of the bell, they have those areas there, across the bottom of the scabbard here, and what I'm also going to be doing is this area here, so the inside of the shield has all these sort of like gubbin areas on it, these sort of like metallic areas here, and when you're doing it, don't forget underneath the vents, so as you look up from the bottom, he has these vent areas here, okay? So I'm gonna do all of those, and I'm gonna come back to you. Okay, so I've gone around with the white, giving it two coats, so it's a nice sort of solid consistency. And uh, what we're gonna do now is pick out the various gold details. Now, the chapter colors are lots of golds all around them, things like that, and it sort of really sort of pops against the blue. So we're gonna use Citadel Retributor Armor. And as always, a little bit on the palette. Dot of water in there as well. Always thin your paints, even your metallics. And we're going to come in and we're going to pick out all the gold. It's, it's really as simple as that. So it's like things like the Aquila on his chest. Yeah, so that, that area. He's got these sort of areas on here which are gold. We've got the pommel of the sword and then we've got things like around the edge of the shield here so it's quite useful it's got a line to it so we can go around the edge of the shield yeah we're going to go around there this this area in here we're going to go over all of that and gold that as well he's got various different sort of livery on his armor at the back his iron halo needs to be gold as well so there's lots and lots of gold on the miniature. So I'm going to go around, I'm going to pick out all the gold, get a nice finish on that, and then I'm going to come back to you. And there we go, so that's all the gold done. You've got a embossed on the shield at the back there, and all of the sort of liver is picked out. So we're on to the next stage. So next stage is relatively quite easy. So we're going to use Corvus Black, and if you look at a Marine's armour, they have these sort of like panel gaps, here. So all we're going to do is go around the miniature and pick out the panel gaps in Corvus Black. Now 
that, that essentially is like their undersuit as far as I get it, as far as I understand in the law and the fluff and things like that. It's like their undersuit, it sort of like brings their armour together. And all we're going to do is we're just going to black them in. Okay, simple as that. I'm going to find them throughout the miniature. And black them in. Okay, he'll have them on the back of his legs. It's around here, so at the back here you've got them. And on the other leg as well. That just sort of like breaks up the armour and it's going to affect us when we put the wash over the miniature. It's going to help a lot with that as well. So trickier ones to get to. Under the actual sort of armpit. He has one there. And there's also one in there. Okay. So once they're filled in, it just breaks up that armour a little bit. <clears throat> makes it easier. The next stage with the corpus black just to go on the back of the shield and anywhere where we've gone over slightly we're just going to neaten up okay so I'm going to neaten up the shield and then we'll come back to you and we'll start on the purest seals and there we go so we've uh, picked out the gaps in the panels and also tidied up the back of the shield so what we're going to do now is pick out all of the little sort of wax seals on the purity seals they're going to be in base meshed and red any red will do for this guy, it doesn't need to be a specific colour. It's just to simulate the wax. And we're also going to go into his eyes as well and make sure that we get a red base in there. So, as always, a bit on the palette, tiny bit of water. Water just allows you to control your paint. It's where it's going, what you're doing with it. Now this is a test on camera, isn't it? To do his eyes. get into that eye socket and obviously the eye in his helmet is a lens and that's why it's red people you know got bright red eyes doing things like that but okay a bit more difficult is to get around this side just take your time the paint will flow easier because you've got that water in there and then we're going to go onto the purity seal so the purity seal is really easy just the full circle Let's get it red, okay? Any errors like that, we quickly clean brush off. And I can go back to my original blue and just work that paint away, okay? So I'm going to pick out all the purity seals and then come back to you. And there we go. So I've uh, picked out the heads of the purity seals and I've even done the, the grip of the sword in red, so like quite Roman, aren't they? ultramarines so on and so forth so the next stage as with all games workshop kits it's, it's laden with skulls <laughs> the skulls are everywhere um skulls are here skulls are here skulls in the hall and in in the world of warhammer um skulls are actual skulls so they're you know some of them obviously are embossed on the shoulder pads and things like that um but these ones are actually skulls of like sort of famous warriors and all this sort of thing uh, so i'm coming in with a bit of skeleton bone um shabti bone from citadel will work exactly the same way for this um, all we're doing, see him again, a bit on the palette, tiniest bit of water in there, that should be my painting catchphrase, and we're just going to pick out the skulls, so really, there's the ones on the back of the shield, okay, and obviously we're going over the metal, but it should take quite well, okay, down the middle there, now because we're, they're actually modelled into the kit, we should just be able to run our brush down the centre and pick all of them out in almost like sort of one or one or two sort of brush strokes. Okay, he's got a skull built into the actual hilt of his sword, so we're just going to go around there and I'm going to do that as an actual skull as well. Okay. And a quick check around the model. Have we got any more? I don't think that's big enough to be an actual skull, is it? It seems like it's built out of something else. Okay, so that's the skulls done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pick out... He's got a key 
hanging on the inside of his shield. Um, I don't know what it's the key for, maybe it's his locker, who knows. Um, just to make it a little bit different, we're going to pick that out in Rune Lord Brass. Just these little tiny areas of detail, just sort of make a model pop. Uh, so a bit of Rune Lord Brass on the palette. And we're just going to pick that key out. Okay, now I can use small details like that. If we use the side of our brush, just drag it along. And that's it, done. Simple as that. Okay, we're going to leave that to dry. And I'm going to come in next and pick out his tabard and the actual paper aspects of the purity seals. And then on his armour, he's also got things that are they're sort of pinned. What's best for livery on it? So these all need to be parchment, paper, and he's even got one on his shoulder pad there. So we're going to do those, and then we're getting ready to the stage where we can actually wash this miniature. And then we should, we should be bar ready at that point, and then we'll do a few more steps after that. Okay? There we go. So we're now fully dry, and we're going to just pick out the, the last sort of final details to, to give him a solid base coat. Okay? So a neat base coat, guys, is really the sort of key to painting. Um, but how I'm going to do this, I'm going to pick it out in leather brown. Um, and any sort of light brown is, is a really good basis for parchment, robes, things like that. Um, as was always, a bit of paint, a bit of water to aid that flow. And he has livery up here. So, sorry, this is like his... I don't know, like under robe whatever it is and we're just painting that in okay i'm going to paint that in there we're going to make sure that we're covering it nicely so it might need, it might take two thin coats and we're also going to pick out things like the purity seals and any of these sort of areas here so i'm going to go around the miniature do those two thin coats and then come back to you with a fully base painted miniature and there we go so that's all the base colors put on the miniature now um neat as we can and um you know hey you know what if you wanted to game with that no one's going to say anything is he? he's painted didn't he <laughs> um but what i'm going to do to get him battle ready for this video i'm going to now come in with dark tone quick shade from army painter and i'm going to dark tone the whole model okay now, this stuff will tie all of these colours together, okay? And it's a really sort of solid way of just sort of finalising a miniature. And for battle ready, if you just want to get your models on the board, get those games in, great stuff. And don't be shy with this stuff, you know, let's get it on him, yeah? Straight away, can you see how it goes into those recesses? And it really sort of makes those colours pop, okay? I'm just going to paint everything yeah obviously as the name suggests it will darken everything down which is what I want okay in there in the greaves of his armor it's going to go into all of the recesses and it's just going to make this model pop okay even over the white areas I'm dark turning all the way down in one streak to avoid those sort of brush strokes yeah and let's make sure we get it on everything okay the trick with dark tone really is it's it is a very useful tool and yes you can sit for hours you know highlighting these colors up and so on and so forth but for the purposes of getting this model ready for battle we're just going to use this quick and simple technique okay I've got, get it in there, let it settle as well, because it'll settle in it just straight away. You know what I mean? Make sure we get it everywhere on the model. Down the scabbard. Under areas of shade, things like that. Okay. I'm going to go around. If you see it pooling, just remove the excess with a brush. Okay. I'm going to go around, dark to the whole guy, and then we'll come back and do his base. Okay, so that's the tone on there, and what it's done is, as it says on the tin really, tone it all down, bring it all together. So, 
for a battle ready miniature that would be sort of like the finish that you'd be getting but we still need to do his base so quick and easy basing is something that I sort of like use a cheating product and it's called Vallejo Earth Texture and it's like a a paste essentially so we take the top off It's like a sort of almost like a, a gunk is the best way of sort of looking at it. It's like a, a nasty sort of paste. Um, old brush, <clears throat> this stuff is where brushes go to die. So use an old brush here, okay? And we're literally just pasting this off the base, spreading it around, giving it a bit of undulating texture. And what this is going to do. Yes, it stops your, your miniature having a, essentially a flat plastic base plate, but it also gives you that texture to dry brush over. Okay, I'm not going to go overly crazy with it, you know, because obviously it does take a, a little while to dry. But it'll just give the miniature's base some texture that we can then do some basic techniques on just to get his base up to scratch. Okay, now this is how I pretty much base all of my miniatures. Um, yes, you can use sand and other textured paints as well. This is exactly the same way that you'd use those. Um, in between his legs there, look. Spread it around. I'm not 100% worried if it gets on his feet a little bit. Because at the end of the day, he's sort of climbing through battleground or whatever it is. And there we go. So that's a textured base. Um, that's going to take a little while to dry, but while that drying time's occurring, I'm also going to take the opportunity to go on the edge of his base. <clears throat> and to do that, I'm going to use Citadel Corvus Black. Now, it's just, it just finishes the miniature off, okay? So, a little bit of Corvus Black on my palette. Making sure that my hands are, are dry, I'm going to pick the miniature up. And I'm just going to go around the edge of the base. Okay, and it just again, it just just is a neat and little finishing trick. It just means that your model looks better on the tabletop and anywhere where you've had colours overspill, it's just going to cover those up. Okay, let's go around the edge there and flip him slightly. There we go. So. Now he obviously needs to dry, his base will need to dry. And then once we'll come back, dry brush up his base and add a, a tuft for a bit of texture. And there we go. So that's the uh, the basing material dried. And the wash is nice and dry. Um, so all we're gonna do now is add a bit of a dry brush to the top of this. Um, it's really dead easy guys. We're just gonna use Mechanicum Standard Grey and this just, just really sort of pings the texture. So get your, get your dry brush or your, roll, your rolled brush or whatever it is. Now we're dry brushing, work it into the bristles. Yeah, dry brushes are designed for that, getting most of it off and, and dry brush in sort of one direction and just build it up. Yeah. Just build it up, let it build up on top of that texture, picking out what's already there. Okay, now doesn't need anything over the top. Yeah, I've just added a bit of bit of variation to it there. So one last thing, just to finish off this model, we're going to add a tuft. So get your look. You, you, look, you can you can buy it at PVA if you want, but <laughs> that's like two quid. Um, it's, it really is the same thing. Um, I want a dot PVA. Um, out and on my surface, don't need a great deal, okay. And uh, enter trusty old brush. And what we're going to do, we're going to dot PVA where I want to put a tuft, okay. So I want one there, okay. And think about you know where this model is, it's in a battleground, it's war torn, so maybe I want one there as well, okay. Now with tufts, these are army painter wasteland tufts. It's that easy. Pull it off. Lay it down. And then just use anything. Just tap it onto the PBA. 
Okay, that's one down. I'm gonna go smaller, I think, near this area. So I don't want to overload it, but I also want it to look cool. And then we'll have a medium in there as well. Okay, so I've got a bit of excess glue on there, but that will dry clear. So there we go. One battle ready, Primaris Lieutenant for the Ultramarines. Now, thanks for watching the video. That's, I mean, I quite happily play with that. Um, but I will do a part two, which will be how to take this guy to the next level. But for now, that's how I would approach battle ready Space Marines. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, please like it. Please comment. Let me know what chapter you're doing. Let me know if you want me to paint another chapter. Um, I'm more than happy to do these type of things. Um, it's actually sort of fired a bit of an interest in doing a small Ultramarines force for me. Um, I'll do a second video and it'll be how do we take this to the next level. Okay, but for now, there's your battle ready primary Ultramarines ready to vanquish the foe. So thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe, like me, share me, all this sort of thing. <laughs> and as always, guys, happy hobbying.